Hey everybody, Reef Girl here. Now that the tank is almost a year old, oh my god, almost a year, I thought it might be time to give you an update on what I'm doing about dosing. Dosing is a huge topic and a lot of times when you're first starting out, like I was a couple of years ago with reef tanks, you really don't know what to do, when to do it, how to do it, why you're doing it, all of those questions. I'll do my best to answer at least some of them and give you some basic information in this video and take you through what I'm currently doing on Amathea's garden. What you see here is my Jabo DP4. I'm getting it ready to use on the new tank. It was sitting idle for several months. I never did clean it out when I took it off the previous tank. So that's kind of what I'm taking care of now. Before we get into that any further, let's talk about why dose a reef tank. If you've had a reef tank for any length of time, you know that the critters you keep consume elements in the water. And you need to replace those elements to keep your critters growing and healthy. The method you use to replace those elements is a complex question. It depends a lot on what kind of a reef tank you have. And everyone knows every single tank is different. Many people have a tank set up that they can replace the elements just with water changes. Usually those are smaller tanks and for whatever reason, we're reluctant to do water changes. Is it because we suffer from lazy reefer syndrome? Is it because we're worried about something bad happening during a water change? There, there are so many reasons why we would avoid them. But if you have a small enough tank, you don't need to dose. You can keep up with the requirements of your critters just by doing water changes. So let's say you've decided that water changes aren't for you for whatever reason. <laughs> no judgment here because I've been there. There's no way you should be putting anything into your tank unless you can test first to make sure that your tank needs whatever chemical it is that you're going to be adding. There are all kinds of elements in your tank water that will need to be replaced, but for the purposes of this video, to keep things rather simple, I'm going to stick with the big three. Calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium. I'm not going to talk here about what you need to have in your tank in terms of livestock before you should think about dosing, because that's going to vary so widely between tanks. What I will say is, Get yourself those three test kits, calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium. Get decent quality kits. I personally use Hannah checkers because I don't have to read the color. It's as simple as that. It's so hard sometimes to interpret the levels when you have to look at color comparisons that Hannah does it for me with the Hannah checker. Hannah doesn't make a magnesium checker, so I use the Salifert magnesium test for that. That's a much simpler one. The chemical in the vial turns from purple to blue, and it's very easy to tell when that happens. The recommended levels of your test results are kind of loosely based on natural seawater, but not completely. For calcium, you should have between 400 and 440. For alkalinity, somewhere between 7 and 8, although that often gets pushed higher for many different reasons. And for magnesium, somewhere between 1250 and 1350. As I said, this is based on the levels in natural seawater, but there are many reasons why an aquarist might go beyond that range. So now we can answer the questions of both why you dose and also when you should dose. If any of your test results fall below the ranges I just gave, then you should consider dosing. And mainly, the relationship between calcium and magnesium is one that you have to consider very, very carefully, and it's often overlooked. The level of magnesium should be maintained at roughly three times the level of calcium. <clears throat> so if your calcium is 400, then your magnesium should be no less than 1200. If it's less than that, then the calcium will not be bioavailable for the corals to use. Alkalinity also plays a part in this, but it's the magnesium part of it that gets left out of the equation too often. So by maintaining calcium within the recommended ranges and magnesium three times whatever your calcium is, both will be in safe ranges to be healthy for your tank. 
And when it comes to alkalinity, the safe range is between seven and eight. Do not let it drop below seven. You will see the impact in your tank on your corals, depending what type you're keeping. Pushing it beyond eight is acceptable and it's probably better done as you gain more experience and as your tank becomes more demanding based on the critters that you're keeping in there. So to recap, why do we dose? Because the critters in our tanks use up vital elements that we need to replace. When do we dose? When the levels of those vital elements drop below the safe ranges that will allow those critters to grow and stay healthy. And how do we know when those levels are below the safe ranges? By testing our water. So thanks for watching part one. It was kind of an introduction to dosing. Next up is part two, where we'll get into the nitty gritty of how to actually do it.